Howdy, gonna go over the diagnostic process for some of these Chevy uh, interior blower motors. That's the, the fan for the inside heat and AC. This customer has a 2004 Silverado 2500 HD and the complaint was not blowing on any speed. Now that's already usually a, uh, th that's part of the diagnosis actually is telling if it blows on any speed at all that a lot of times will help narrow it down. If it blows on some speeds, but not others, then that's a problem with, usually with the blower motor resistor. It, it could feasibly be something in this control panel or something like that. That's not usually the case. Usually we're looking at when we have an issue with, with it not blowing, usually it's either A, a fuse, of course, check that first, um, or it'll be the blower motor or the blower motor resistor and potentially the connector for that resistor. So let me show you what that is down here. Here's the blower motor. It's easy to replace. Blower motor resistor, easy to replace. Blower motor resistor connector. Um, also not, not too bad. But these are the usual culprits here. One or more of these three. Now, like I said, if it works on some speeds but not others, forget about replacing the blower motor. That's not gonna be the issue. If it's working on some speeds, it'll work at, at any speed. And it, it may be getting weak over time, but as far as having an issue with, uh, with not blowing at all sometimes, that's not gonna be it. We're looking over here, these two guys. Now, if it's not working at any speed, like in this case, that usually points to the blower motor, but not always. This can be failed either across all of its circuits, hypothetically, that could happen. It could, it could fail on all the circuits for all the different speeds, or it could fail at the main uh, power supply circuit. Basically, you have, you have uh, seven wires here. Five of them are for the different speeds, and then two of them are your main power and ground for the blower. So the first thing to check if you do not have it working on any speed, just to confirm, don't pull this plug out of the blower motor. Strip a little bit of insulation, a knife or a razor or something like that. Be careful, don't cut yourself. Strip a little bit of insulation away. See if you have power and ground there. And you can you can tape it up with electrical tape. Use good electrical tape, please, like a Scotch 33 or something like that. Um, not something that's gonna, you know, shrivel up and fall off after a year. But anyway, cut a little bit of insulation. Don't just yank out the connector. There's electrical reasons that that doesn't give you a sure diagnosis. Um, and turn it all the way up to five and see if you have 12 volts here. If you do have 12 volts, that means that the resistor is sending plenty of power through. You need to take out the blower motor either replace it or see if something is, is blocking it from moving or something like that. But yeah, at, the, at that point, if you have 12 volts here and it is not blowing, then move on to the blower motor. If you do not have 12 volts here, the next thing to do is yank this connector if you can. It might be stuck in this case, but you're gonna wanna look at, you'll need to look at the original wire colors more than likely, but another way. Hold the connector like this. Look at pins number one and number three. Get a voltmeter. And this is already repaired, but I'm just going over the, the diagnostic process for you here. You want to measure Pins one and three for power and ground. So, oh, I can't hold this phone at the same time. So, ground here at number three and power at, at power. You get the idea. You should have 12 volts there at all times, even with the key off. If you don't, then there's a deeper electrical problem that we're not getting into that today, but more than likely you'll have 12 volts across pins one and three. 
if you have voltage there and you don't have voltage coming out, then you for sure need the blower motor resistor. Now there's a few different versions of these. Um, I have two of them right here for you because of a mistake on my part. But it'll be good to have nonetheless. Let's see, here is... Basically, there's pretty sure there's a few different versions. If you've got the, the model and all that right, um, there's for manual and automatic. And this is the manual kind of setup. Automatic just means it'll have a screen that shows you the exact temperature and numbers, and you control that number. Um, on this, you just have these sliders. That's what's considered manual. And then there is two hole and four hole. And. And you can see that. Wow. Goodness. Right here. See four holes on top, two holes on the bottom. Look at the one you have first before you. Um, before you go and order one or, or go to the parts store or something like that, so you can make sure you get the right one. The tops are also, th these vary just depending on manufacturer. The top part, it doesn't really matter what it looks like. Don't worry about that if that looks different. The main thing you're looking for is, is it for automatic or manual? And what's the, what's the number of the holes? Now, this is the old one here. And... What we found was if we wiggled the connector, we could actually get it to come back on for a few seconds. And when we pulled that connector out, and it was actually very difficult to do this, and if you can't, if the connector feels like it's like melted into there or something like that, then that's a good indication that you need to replace the resistor and the connector. But you see those burnt pins in there. That's that, again, I guess I had the numbers backwards. I probably should have said it the other way. But that's that one and three where we we're talking about earlier the main power supply and ground were actually just burnt up and melted a little bit and they weren't making a good connection. That's why we didn't have it on any speed because those pins weren't, weren't being sufficiently conductive to, to carry that current and make it work at all. We look at the connector, if I can find where I dropped it. We see the same thing just burnt up. So in this case, we want to replace the resistor and the connector. When you go through and replace the resistor is easy enough. It's just a couple bolts. When you go through and replace the connector, um, I recommend doing one wire at a time, holding the connectors the same way against each other. Cut one wire, splice it to the new one. Cut the next wire, splice it to the new one, just to make sure you don't get them mixed up. They do absolutely have to be in this order or it will not work. And a lot of times the new connectors are not color coded like the original vehicle. So you have to be extra careful with that. In this case, it was all just white and black wires. So not very helpful there, but that's pretty much it. So recap, if it works on some speeds, but not others, go ahead, skip to the resistor, check that, check the connector. You might have to replace both. Um, but more than likely, you'll have to at least place, replace the resistor itself. Check and see how many bolt holes it has. Check for power coming to uh, that first and third pin there, or fifth and seventh, depending on how you're holding it. If it doesn't work on any speed, check for 12 volts through these wires themselves. Don't unplug it, because that might give you a false reading. Check through the wires themselves. If you don't have power, then move back to the resistor. You might have to replace the connector and the resistor. Check the inside of that connector, see what it looks like. Check for burnt pins, anything like that. If anything is burnt up, do both the connector and resistor. If it's not burnt up in there, then do the resistor by itself. And that's it. Y'all have a good one.